Listen, we got to do the big pan uh, across the dead body as we're walking, right? Just like the cinematic trailers, right? So you're walking and then, yeah, yeah, yeah. oh my God, they're all dead. Got an officer down. This is Doc. Proceed with mission. Oh shit! Oh, shit. Jesus Christ! Oh Jesus Christ! Go through the door, go through the door. Go, go, go. Keep moving, Breach, keep moving. Fuck, over there, over there. Ugh. I'm healing, cover me. Gotta flash into this room. Go, go, go. Okay, apparently they know we're fucking here already. So just an absolute crazy turn of events today. Early this morning, Void Interactive has lifted the NDA and has dropped a co-op update for all of the supporters who have access to the alpha. So if you bought at a higher tier, you're able to jump in right now and play in my opinion, the the what should have been Ready or Not's first kind of foray into showcasing the game. Right now, the game is in the best state that it has ever been in. And I want to talk about it all here, my thoughts after playing about four hours this morning. And really, I just want to jump back in at this point. If you guys like the video, leave a like on it. Subscribe, literally subscribe if you guys haven't already. Because we're going to be covering Ready or Not for the foreseeable future. Because it actually is a game that, albeit does have some game breaking bugs for the most part was a pretty polished experience when I could actually get in and play I started my stream this morning and for the first 30 minutes or so I was crashing as soon as I clicked the play button on Steam. There was verifying files that weren't downloaded when I reinstalled it. I had to reinstall the game three times. I don't know if it's a Steam issue or if it's a Void Interactive issue. For some reason, I could not get the game to start for like 30 minutes. But let me tell you, when I jumped in, you turn the HUD off, you turn the, the sound up, you got the, the minimal HUD. The immersion factor here is top notch. A lot of people in my chat, and we had about three to 400 people in there today just watching me play. No cam, no nothing. That's the gameplay you guys are seeing on screen here. Wow. No word of a lie. One of the most immersive kind of FPS experiences that I've played since really early days Tarkov. And a lot of people in chat were saying that as well, that it feels like they're watching what should have been. The lighting and the ambience here when you're walking through these hallways, the, the gore and the people on the ground convulsing. Well, I will say those character models don't look great. The overall atmosphere of the game is actually really incredible for the state that it's in. The art and the design team, top notch in this game. Now, there are some issues. They have this music stinger that happens when you get shot. And I know a lot of people in chat were saying that they should just remove that completely. The good thing is, is you can turn down all the music. For me, I kept it at about a 30 to 35%. So you can hear a little bit of music going when things get up. And it felt like a really good viewing experience from the stream's perspective. The loadout menu has been completely overhauled and in my opinion looks better than what we had before. If you guys remember, you had to like select 
the weapon sitting on a bench. They still kind of have it, but it's all decided from a menu on the left side of your screen, which you guys are seeing here. What I will say is I hate that I have to go to a locker to choose the weapon that I want to use and then back out, go to the, the bench to then customize those weapons with attachments, back out. If I want to put night vision goggles on, I go back to the locker to put night vision on. And then if I want to change my character's skin or his outfit or his voice, you have to go to the mirror to change that as well. There's too many choices in this locker room area, and it's just annoying and tedious to actually set up a loadout. I get it, they're right beside each other, but I just wish that was all in one cohesive menu. So you can just walk up to a locker, do it kind of like how Ground Branch does it. They let me set my weapon, the attachments, the, the clothing, the skins, the colors, all of that stuff in one menu. And if you take what you guys have here and just apply that to a one menu system, you got a winner. One thing I also would like to see is when you take off the HUD, I'm glad that they actually leave the prompts on, so if you walk up to a door, the prompt is still there, or if you walk up to a body to, like, report it, like, oh, you got a DOA civilian, or you're arresting somebody, those prompts still stay, but when you're switching channels through voice, so if you're moving from local to, you know, team to squad, those prompts don't pop up on screen. I wish there was, like, a minimal HUD option or a quick button to turn the HUD on so if I have to make quick little changes on the fly and then turn it off just so the most important information is there and the, the information that you don't need to see all the time but is just available to you when you do it. Right now it's a show HUD or a don't show HUD. They, they, they should tune that a little bit or give us the option a la a Ghost Recon Breakpoint where we can control every single aspect of that HUD. So if I just want to keep on my character's, you know, stance and health and, you know, no ammo or anything like that, I can just turn all that, just allow us to customize it or make it better than it is. Right now, the audio in this game is top fucking notch. After playing World War III and then jumping to this, it's night and day. Hearing grenades going off around the corner, hearing gunfire, you know, two or three rooms over. They're to our right. Got a door right here. Deploying cam light. Fuck, over there, over there. Ugh. I'm healing, cover me. There's another one. Go around that far right side if you guys can. Try to get flank route. Flash out to the oh, Shit. Far right. Go, go, go. They're moving through the center. That was intense. Everything is very pinpoint and the weapon sound incredibly realistic. Probably some of the best audio that I've heard in a game since, uh, you know, a Tarkov or an Insurgency Sandstorm. They really fucking nailed it on all aspects of design with this game. Now, let's talk about some game-breaking bugs. Obviously, we can kind of throw away the first 30 minutes of my live stream. I couldn't get into the game at all. But once I got in, there weren't a lot, but I did notice... Walking down the stairs in hotel, once we're kind of walking around looking for the bombs and stuff, we uh, we found a portal to the nether realm, and you guys know me, I play an early access game, I have to walk off the edge of a level. We somehow found that in hotel. Now, obviously this needs to be fixed. Thankfully, not a lot of people are in the game right now, you know, exposing it. It's not like the game is available to buy on Steam. You can buy it on their website, but in order to get in now, you're paying a hefty price. And this is all going to come down to what your value of worth is for a video game. A lot of people always come in and ask me, is the game worth it? Currently, if you want to buy in and play the game right now, it's $160 Canadian, which I think is around 120 US. A lot of people just shut the video off. Totally understand. But I did have some people come through to the stream. They saw what the game, you know, where it's at, what it is, and what it offers. And after about 20 minutes, they said, yeah, fuck it, I'll buy it and jump in. And we ended up playing some games together, and we had a blast. 
that being said, do I recommend this game at $160? Of course fucking not. I'm a content creator. I've been covering this game for four years at this point. Of course I've made my money back on that purchase already. But a lot of people don't have the luxury that I do to be able to do that. So if you're buying it just as a gamer, I would just wait. Don't even buy the standard edition pre-order. Just wait. I know the game looks solid and I know that a lot of people want to jump in. If you bought it years ago and you felt burned, I highly recommend jumping back in. Download the build and just hop in. Because right now is the best state that Ready or Not has ever been in. And I said in my live stream today that I know that earlier on when shit was going wrong and the game came out, they did the PvP update and not a lot of people were happy. I was on the dev shit list. We heard rumors through, you know, former employees that my videos weren't allowed to be talked about in their offices because it kills morale. Here's the prime example of what this channel represents and what I represent. When you do good, you get praised for it from me, and I will do whatever I can to promote the fact that you guys are doing it right. And this is what I've always said. This is the best time to play Ready or Not, but it is still not the best time to buy it because we do have still a long road ahead of us, right? They're still calling this alpha. Personally, I think it's getting closer to a beta state, and they're talking about releasing the beta, I believe, in June of 2022. I fully believe that they're on track to do it, obviously barring some catastrophic shit that goes on between December and June of next year. This game is actually on its way, and I want to attribute a lot of that to the inclusion of Team 17 coming on as an official publisher, bringing the resources, bringing the money, and bringing some talent over to help them deliver on what this game is. Ready or not, surprisingly, is almost ready. Uh, like, the memes... Everything in the last three years that we have talked about is actually just being erased with the release of, I think, what everybody has been waiting for from this team. And there's a bunch of little bugs, too, like throwing a flashbang, and sometimes the AI doesn't react to it. So you walk in, you might take a shot or two, you might fucking die because the game's hardcore. There's obviously some tweaks that need to be, you know, fleshed out. But if you're talking about the spiritual successor to SWAT 4, I fully see this game being that in two years' time. I I'm having a blast with it, man. I wanted to put a video out because I'm actually excited to play more of this game on stream. It's been a rough couple of months. It's been a rough couple of years in the FPS space. And, and I'll be honest, Ready or Not contributed to that in the early days. But they're busting their ass. And it's clear to me that these guys are on the right track. They have a vision. And I think if they just keep their heads down, grind it out, and build the game that they wanted to build from day one, they have the resources to do it. Just keep fucking doing it. My name is Big Fry. Thank you guys for watching. If you guys haven't subscribed to my second channel, the link is down below. I am going to chop up that live stream and put a bunch of gameplays up of a bunch of different runs on all different maps. Content coming galore. That channel is more for the live stream content. This channel is more for the, the edited commentary stuff that you guys are used to. So if you guys are looking for more gameplay related and just me enjoying playing games or talking about games or ranking games in tier lists, that channel is over there for you. The link is down below. I appreciate you guys watching, and I'll see you on the next one.